Yo, what is going on guys? Swag, you're back. Today we're talking about the Los Angeles Lakers. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Lakers are about to be must-see TV. They already were a team that you didn't want to miss with LeBron and AD, but right now with Russell Westbrook, are you kidding me? The brother averaged 22, 12, and 12 this season, 27, 7, and 7 last season on 47%. Russell Westbrook can adapt to anyone. If he played with James Harden and was an all-star, had multiple 40-point games with James Harden alongside him, how the hell can he not play with LeBron James and Anthony Davis? I mean, AD already came out and said, yo, I'll play the five if needed. LeBron, I'll play the four if needed. This is going to be, and when I say must-see TV, I don't mean it's like you got to watch it and they're going to lo lose some games, win some games. Like, nah, the Lakers, I'm going to make a bold prediction. Are you ready? Bro, the Lakers, they win 65 games next season. Assuming that there's 82 played, the Lakers will win 65 games. I don't know if that's really bold. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I mean, with AD and LeBron, well, especially LeBron being 37, around when the season starts and AD, I mean, is in his prime. But the reason why I think the Lakers are going to be the best team in the league, man, you know, the Nets are my hometown team and James Harden's my favorite player. But like, we've got to be a little bit realistic here. Russell Westbrook was the perfect fit for the Lakers because he can score, he can pass, he defends, he'll steal the ball, man. He just does everything. Like Russ, the only weakness to Russ's game is he plays a little bit too quick, which should change with LeBron because LeBron's going to always dictate the tempo and the pace of the games. And then also shooting. But, I mean, like, Russell Westbrook, the thing is, man, like, good coaches are going to be able to utilize him, man. The Rockets had Russ going downhill a ton. Like, they would ha basically what they would do is they would have Russ cut. So, like, I don't know basketball much, but, but basically, like, what the Rockets would do is they would have, like, James Harden. They would Someone would set a screen for him, and then they'd have Russ cut or something. Or they'd have Russ on the basketball, and then they'd run high pick and rolls. But it's just hard to play when because James Harden never plays without the ball. He doesn't move without the basketball. So I think, honestly, Russ and LeBron is going to be really fun because LeBron does move without the basketball, believe it or not. I mean, LeBron's always been a good cutter and obviously has high IQ. So how this works is a good question. It's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one between LeBron and, and Russ, but I think Anthony Davis as well. is just they have like a low post player. So when you have Anthony Davis to throw the ball down to to get a bucket, it helps. But, I mean, we're not even talking about that really. We're here to talk about Carmel Anthony. So that was kind of like, I didn't mean to waste your guys' time with that. I just wanted to... Uh, make my case about Russ. I think he's going to be great for the Lakers. But for Carmelo Anthony, he shot 41% from three this season off of the bench for the Portland Trailblazers. He's obviously been there the past couple of years. But I mean, now 37 years old and a free agent. We've heard for weeks, for even months, that Carmelo Anthony to the Lakers makes a lot of sense. I mean, LeBron and, and Carmelo, they go way back, man, to the 2003 draft class. They've obviously always wanted to play together. I'm going to go out on a limb here. This is without any evidence. This is just my opinion. But I mean, the Lakers could have had Carmelo, but he ended up going to the Blazers to begin with. So why didn't LeBron want Carmelo? Is it because he needs the ball? He can't play winning style. He can't play defense. I think so too, but Carmelo has matured the past couple of years. I mean, he shot 41 from three. Obviously he knows his role. Melo two years ago still thought that he was a star, but now Melo's like, yo, I'm not a star anymore, but I can still put the ball in the basket. I can still help a team win. And he did exactly that for the Blazers. I thought the Blazers would go to the finals as you no cap, bro. I mean, assuming the Lakers were injured and the Clippers, I thought that they'd get to the finals. It didn't happen because guys like CJ McCollum and Yusef Nurkic completely sold Dame, but Melo played well. So I think Melo, bro, he replaces Kyle Kuzma because he's a better three-point shooter than Kuz. He doesn't have the defense, but I mean, Kuz was about, what, 36% from three this season? So Melo's got 5% on him. Obviously, Melo one-on-one is still unstoppable. I mean, Carmelo Anthony, like, you can't let him go one-on-one -on -one. down in the post, especially. He's got a wide variety of moves. So you bring in Carmelo Anthony and Russell Westbrook. Now we're talking, man. Like, these Laker games are at night for me. I'm on the East Coast, so you guys are three hours behind me. And if I'm free, I'm definitely going to have Lakers games on. I watched a little bit of Lakers games because I had Dennis Schroeder in fantasy, but obviously Dennis Schroeder is not no longer going to be a Laker. I don't, I don't know what's go. Like, are the Lakers just going to... He's just going to walk, right? Because he wasn't in the trade for Russ because they sent over, what was it, Kyle Kuzma, a first-round pick, the 22nd pick that ended up being Isaiah Jackson. And KCP, I don't even remember what was in that trade, but... Yeah, I was making the case for Russ for a long time, man. Like, weeks, man. I just, I love Russ's game. I think the intensity and the firepower that he brings to the Lakers is big. Because if you play for Los Angeles, man, it's a huge city. One of the greatest cities in the world. You got to bring the intensity every single night. And that's something that Russ does. You can say what you want, but Russell Westbrook brings the intensity every single night. So I'm happy that Russ is in LA. He finally gets a chance at a championship. And 
Honestly, I love big threes, man. I'm not saying I love super teams. This isn't a super team, though. LeBron 37, AD, who people are saying isn't even a top 10 player anymore, that Giannis is better than him, and then Russell Westbrook, who people are always going to hate on. And to this point, Russ is 32, or probably he's turning 33 soon. So it's not a super team, man. And these big threes are good for the league because it's competitive, it's fun, and good luck winning a champion today without a big three, bro. Or at least like three, like uh, a superstar and two all stars. So like LeBron, superstar, Anthony. I mean, Anthony Davis is a superstar when he's healthy. The problem is he usually isn't healthy, but I mean, Anthony Davis can get you 30 points. Like he can be a number one option on a championship team. Hello, he was the number one option for the Lakers in the bubble. LeBron James is still LeBron James. I mean, he was obviously at full strength. LeBron's going to be in the MVP conversation. You could give the MVP award to LeBron every single season. They don't do that though. I mean, LeBron could easily have more MVPs. He's already obviously has multiple, but LeBron could probably have like six or seven MVPs, bro. It's LeBron freaking James. Hate him or love him. That's how it is for greatness. And then Russell Westbrook. 22, 12, and 12 this season. Led a is absolutely banged up, COVID-led, horrific Wizards team led by Scott Brooks. Well, led in quotes. Basically, Russell Westbrook was the coach of that team. Russ just makes guys better. He puts smiles on people's faces. Like, I know that's kind of corny, but the thing about Russ is people want to play with him, man. Like, people gravitate towards Russell Westbrook. Go ask Ben McElmore and Austin Rivers who their favorite teammate is, man. Is it Russell Westbrook? I don't know exactly about... I don't remember if Ben McElmore said it was Russ, but I'm, I know Austin Rivers said it was Russ. And they only played together for a year. So, and obviously, Austin Rivers, I mean, yeah, he's not he's not a star, but I mean, Austin, well, coming into high school, he was, dude was the GOAT and coming out of high school, but he's a very good role player. There's nothing wrong with being a role player in the NBA, man. If anything, being a role player is kind of cool, because if you're like LeBron James, you got a lot, of, a lot of pressure on you, but hey, if you're a guy, well, not Casey Fee, he's not here anymore, but how about like Taylor Norton Tucker? I mean, I don't, he's not really a role, I mean, he's a role player, but he doesn't have like a big role because he's so young, but I don't know, man. The Lakers are interesting because they definitely have a couple of holes they need to fill. I mean, point guard playmaking was was one of them that they checked off. Now they need to go out and get a three, a four that can defend a little bit and knock down the open three ball. I mean, TJ McConnell on the screen is a guy that I always go to when I talk about the Lakers. He defends, obviously, what, two steals a game, can shoot the three ball, doesn't need the ball in his hands. I mean, TJ McConnell would be a great player for the Lakers. But other than that, guys, let me know your thoughts on the Lakers and Carmelo Anthony. Do you think that... The fit is ideal. Hey, Laker friends, do you want Carmel Anthony on your team? Let me know down below in the comment section. As always, guys, it's Swaggy. I'm signing out. If you haven't already liked the video, really appreciate it, man. Help spread these videos to Laker fans because my Laker videos, there's something that I want to do. Like, I genuinely want to make Laker videos, but they don't get any views. Like, they get like 12 likes, and I have 13,000 subs, and I'm getting 12 likes in Laker videos. So, if you guys are for some reason still watching this, please drop a like, man. It would really help me out, help spread the video, and Go at YouTube's kind of not broken but corrupt algorithm, man. Because I feel like this is a pretty solid video, man. It's obviously insight from a non Laker fan, a guy that wants to see the Lakers succeed because basketball is at its best when the Knicks and the Lakers are succeeding. Because for years they weren't succeeding. Obviously, after Kobe left, the Lakers didn't even make the playoffs. Now they have a championship, and then the Knicks just found themselves back in the championship or, excuse, yeah, they wish back into the playoffs for the first time since 2013 when they had the second seed. And obviously, they lost to Indiana, that was an absolutely brutal series. But yeah, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.